All right, here we are back again with this time May Sarton. May Sarton, she is a poet, of course, of the later 20th century, and the work of hers that we read this week is The Muse and Medusa. All right, if you look at the written out lecture, there is a lovely photograph of May Sarton, which is interesting. You can see that very boxy style of blazer uh, with the shoulder pads that was kind of popular in the 19th. 40s and also a distinctly 1940s hairstyle then. Uh, it looks as if she's maybe reading. She's got some papers in her hand and a pen and a pencil like as a as a reporter of some sort. Um, she looks very much like a reporter in this, in this photo in fact. So that's worth checking out in the lecture, the written out lecture. Uh, you will also find there some links to more biographical and literary information on May Sarton. If you'd like to know more, you can check those out. Um, and there's a, in the previous link, there are links to more information about a movie made of May's novel, Mrs. Stevens Hears the Mermaid Singing. So if you're interested in that, that title to me is so intriguing. You can find more about that uh, from the first website listed there. And then there is a video on YouTube featuring May Sarton reading another poem of hers, My Sisters, Oh My Sisters, which incidentally should remind you in the title at least of Amy Lowell's poem, The Sisters. Uh, because Sarton's poem also discusses fellow poetesses like Sappho, that Amy Lowell discussed, Georges Sand, and Emily Dickinson, which Amy Lowell also discussed in Sisters. Also, there's an audio version of an informative NPR segment on May Sarton. All right, May Sarton, she's an American. She lived from about 1912 until 1995, so to 83 years old. She was born in Belgium. But uh, four years later, her American family moved to Massachusetts. So, New England where she lived the majority of her life, actually. May's father was a noted science historian, while her mother was an accomplished portrait painter. Like many of the other 20th century female writers we have read thus far, May was also active in theater. So interesting, yes, theater. She was a member of Eva La Gallienne's Pacific Repertory Theater and started her own so that's kind of like, you remember when we read about, of course, Susan Glassbell, who with her husband and friends started their own performing group, which of course became a very famous one, Provincetown Players. May wrote novels, journals, and poetry, although she considered poetry the closest connection to the human soul, and thus the nearest way to truth and the human heart. Her writings often involve lesbian relationships, including her perhaps most famous novel, Mrs. Stevens Hears the Mermaid Singing, which I mentioned you could you could uh, learn more about through the links. And there's that movie that was made of it. All right. Um, writing at a time when lesbian relationships were still taboo, however, May, a lesbian herself, suffered the controversy with which these themes marked her writings. The poem we read of hers, The Views at Medusa, which is published in 1971, concerns the artistic struggles women have long faced. Caught between the angel monster antipathy, so the angel and the monster, you know, angel on one pole, monster on the other, that's what I mean by antipathies, opposing poles. Uh, that opinion literary women for ages, as you recall from like the, the Madonna whore polls, you got here the angel monster, right? Or the Eve Mary, that's another version. Um, so caught between dueling polls to dueling versions of women, they demythifies women in the muse as Medusa. So Medusa as a muse. Right? The muse being something obviously viewed as very beneficial and something desirable to have, especially if you're a poet. And then Medusa, which in mythology was a woman who was uh, cast as a monster. And of course, 
demonized and fear inspiring. So that's an interesting read. Enjoy reading more about May Sargent in the anthology and the work of hers we study, The Muse as Medusa. Thanks.